to understand how to construct complicated molecular orbital diagrams, we first need to understand what orbitals are and how they overlap. In basic terms, an orbital is a 3D representation of the wave function, which describes the probability of finding an electron some distance away from the nucleus. The resulting region around the nucleus is what we call an orbital. But because it's a region of probability, it does not actually exist. An atomic orbital is an orbital belonging to an atom. We use the atom's valence electrons configuration to determine which orbitals it has. We don't care about the core electrons because they're not involved in bonding. If we take a hydrogen atom whose electron configuration is 1s1, we see that it has electrons in the s block, so it has an s orbital. The electron configuration for carbon is helium 2s2 2p2. Since carbon has s electrons, it has an s orbital, and since it has at least one p electron, it has three p orbitals available. It's important to note that even though not all three p orbitals are filled with electrons in carbon, having at least one electron in the p orbital means that carbon has all three p orbitals available to be used. The three p orbitals are labeled px, py, and pc. We know that atoms don't just exist by themselves, they bond one another to form molecules. When atoms bond to form molecules, their atomic orbitals mix to form molecular orbitals. Atoms can form single, double, triple, quadruple, and even quintuple bonds, but the atoms we are going to be dealing with in the S and P orbitals can form up to three bonds at most. A single bond formed between atoms is always a sigma bond, and it results from orbitals bonding head-on. There are three ways to form a sigma bond. Two s orbitals can mix head-on to form an elliptical sphere. A p orbital and an s orbital can mix head-on to form the same elliptical sphere with a small tail on the side. Or, two p orbitals can mix together, forming an elliptical sphere with two tails, one on each side. Because these orbitals add up to form a sigma bonding molecular orbital, they are said to be in phase. We represent in phase orbitals by shading them the same color. For every two orbitals that mix in phase, there is a corresponding pair of orbitals that mix out of phase. We represent out of phase orbitals as ones with different shading. When they mix, they cancel each other out and form an antibonding molecular orbital which we represent with a star. To form sigma antibonding orbitals, we can mix any two out of phase s and p orbitals. We can do two s orbitals, an s orbital and a p orbital, or two out of phase p orbitals. One key difference between bonding and antibonding orbitals is when electrons are placed in each. If electrons are added to a bonding orbital, the strength of the bond between the atoms increases. But when electrons are placed to an antibonding orbital, the strength of the bond decreases. The first bond between atoms is always a sigma bond, but pi bonds are the ones responsible for forming double and triple bonds. A double bond consists of one sigma bond and one pi bond. Similarly, a triple bond consists of a sigma bond and two pi bonds. A pi bond is formed when two p orbitals of the same type bond side to side. What we mean by same type of p orbitals is a two p x orbitals or two p y orbitals mix. For example, Two in-phase px orbitals can mix to form a pi bonding orbital as such. Similarly, two out-of-phase orbitals can mix to form a pi antibonding orbital. And just like sigma bonds, placing electrons in a bonding orbital strengthens the bond, and placing them in an antibonding orbital weakens the bond. It is important to note that bonding and antibonding orbitals come in pairs. Whenever a bonding orbital is formed, an antibonding orbital is also formed.